Welcome back, and today we're going to be talking about um, something that a couple of you may need. I've been given a lot of attention to standard playing cards, but not so much if you are not playing a standard playing card game. For example, uh, what if you wanted to, you know, click play, start your game, and then decide on a location where you wanted to play your card? That's what we're going to be talking about today in this video. We want to have multiple locations where you can place your card uh, after you, of course, select one. So let's start off by identifying what's kind of going on with our current system. If we want to place a card, we mouse over it, we click down to select it, and then we have to click again to play the card. If we click to select and then we move our mouse away, it's not going to play our card because we haven't clicked it again. Yet, if we click another card, it's just going to select it because we haven't selected that card yet. And if we go back to the original card, it's just going to select it again. So we clearly have to change something in our script. So let's take a look at that. Currently, we have our deck of cards script and our card info script. And our card info script has been handling all of the selecting and playing up until this point. And we've been using a transform translate to move things around. So what we want to do is we still want to select our card, but after we select our card, we want to be able to select some other space on the board to play it. So what we're going to do is we're going to look inside of our script a little bit. On pointer enter, it selects the card on that local game object on the card itself, but it doesn't select the card on our main script, our deck of cards script. On pointer down, if we have not chosen, then we're going to move on to this conditional statement here. What we would do is, if selected object is true, so that means if our mouse is on top of the card and we have not chosen, then we go to the deck of cards and we choose our card. We say has chosen is true and we transform translate. What we want to do with this is we don't just want to select the card we also want to have some variable inside deck of cards that selects the card. So let's take a look at deck of cards. Now I'm going to turn on outlining so that we can focus on just the right parts of our script. Bear with me for a moment while I reduce some of these things. Let's get rid of all the functions we're not interested in. We're only interested in choose card right now. I'm just going to Minimize some of this other stuff. Almost there. Okay. So choose card. What it does is it says chosen card equals C. We're passing in a card type variable. It then checks to see if the player owns that chosen card. And then it says has chosen equals true. So it looks like we have a card type variable and we have a has chosen boolean variable. Now we also have another function to take a look at player chosen card because this is the one that would typically activate on the second click. So we're going to go to that function right there player chosen card. If our boolean passes, if our boolean is true, and then we're going to play our card and then we're going to end our turn. Okay, so we're going to be looking for um, the part where has chosen is false. That's on end turn, which is fine. So we're going to play our card and then we're going to end our turn. All right, now our play card function is going to need a slight modification because um, what we want to do is we want to play our card on a different location. So we're going to eventually need to pass in a location. But uh, for right now, let's get to just the clicking part of things. And we're going to use some debug statements to determine if our clicks are working properly. So let me find my debug.log. I'm going to get rid of the one that says done. We don't need that. So we're in our card info script and currently uh, we have our, our play option right here. We don't want that condition just because um, it, it's not ideal. 
instead of saying if has chosen, it would be better to say if deck of cards dot deck of cards dot has chosen. And this will look to see if we've chosen any card and not just the card that our mouse is over, which is slightly different because it means once we select a card, um, it will get ready to play it. Now, we could probably improve on this in the future, but we're just checking to see if the game will work. So I'm gonna go into Unity and press play. And right away, what should happen is if I select a card, then even if I click something else, it should play it on the second click. Perfect. Notice how it didn't play the nine, it played the queen that I initially selected. We're probably gonna to wanna to fix this um, in our script because we might wanna be able to play another card. So let's go back to our card info script. We need to have some variable that determines if we're a location or if we're a playable card. Location or playable. Now most of our cards are going to have um, a playable card, but sometimes there'll be a location. So what we want to do is we want to check um, which one we are, and then we want to check if we've selected that particular card. So we're going to do if location or playable. Actually, we want to do if it's false, if we're not location or playable. We're going to make a true. So let's write a comment here. True means location. False means playable. So if it's false and has chosen equals true, then what we would do is we could play a card. So let's take a look at how that changes things. Now we can select different cards and it won't play until we've decided on a card. Great. Our next step is to create something in the middle. So we're no longer going to be using the middle pile empty. Instead, I'm going to deactivate this game object for now because I actually want it for my game, but um, I'm going to create a new empty and call this our place mat. Or you could call it your game mat or whatever you really want to call it. I'm going to anchor it to the middle. And on this placemat, I want to put a grid layout group. Now it doesn't have to be a grid. I mean, you really could place anything anywhere on this, but I'm just going to use a grid layout group for right now. I'll do a fixed column count. I'll make it three columns. Or you know what? Make it, uh, make it two rows. How about a fixed row count? Two rows. And the childs will be aligned with the upper left. Start axis horizontal, start corner, upper left. Try this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take in my prefabs, my card prefab, place it into the placemat. And I'm going to duplicate it. And so right away I see this is not the alignment I want. So I'm going to change my alignment. I want it to be aligned based on, I want it to be more centered. Middle center, I think that's more appropriate. And then my start corner can still be upper left and my start axis is still, you know what, I want my start axis to be vertical. So just to show you guys what that does, it means if I take these away, no, nope, I did that wrong. I want my start axis horizontal. What am I saying? Maybe I'm just not 
thinking properly. That's not changing anything at all. It's supposed to add a card. I wanted to add a card this way, but I guess it's adding cards this way. Eh, not too important for right now. We'll get this to work. So we have these placemats. Now we want to be able to play a card onto uh, one of these spaces. Now these cards themselves, they have a card info script. And what we want to be able to do is to make these locations. So for each one of these cards, I'm just going to select them all at the same time. Oops. And make them locations. Great. Now let's go back to our script and we're going to change something else about these. Since we have this variable, let's go ahead and use it everywhere. So for our on pointer enter, we're going to put some more conditions. If not location or playable, we're basically going to put this everywhere. So it's a good idea to copy it in on pointer exit. Again, if not location or playable, this time let's put some braces and cover the whole thing. On pointer down, we want to keep that one. And then on pointer up, we don't really need that one. Okay, so we're going to change a couple of things. First of all, we don't want to play our card right here. So we can just comment that out or just remove this. No, keep it there, but just comment it out. What we want to do is, let me think. We want to create a conditional statement if location or playable on player down or on pointer down. Then we want to save location, play card. So we kind of want to do it like that. Save the location and then play the card. Um, there are two ways of saving the location. We could think of the vector for this position right here, because this card has a transform position. Or we could just change the sprite on this card, and then we could change like the card info on this card so that it's an actual card. Which one would I do? Uh, I'm not sure. I think both methods would work, but we could either save the position or just change the image on this card right here, sprite, and change the card info. I think both of those would work. Let's go with the image. So if it's a location or playable, then the first thing we want to do is probably change the color of the image using Unity Engine.UI. So the first thing we want to do is um, since this is a game object, game object dot get component image dot color equals color dot red. Let's change it to red so that we've know so that we know we've selected it. So we're just going to do a quick test here. If we click on one of those, it turns red. Perfect. That way we know what location we selected, but notice how we can't change it back to white. So let's quickly do a variable public bool selected location. So on pointer enter selected location equals true. On pointer exit selected location equals no, we don't want to do it like that. What we want to do is on pointer down. Where's that one at? Where we do the color. Oops. It's down here. My mouse wheel isn't really working. I need to get a new mouse. What you want to do, selected location equals not selected location. So that way every time it'll switch. And if location or playable and selected location, then we'll change it to red. If location or playable, 
oops, and not selected location. Then we'll do the same thing, but we'll change it back to white. I guess I put too many lines there. We'll make that white. So let's try it out now. Once red, another one white. Back to red, back to white. Back to red, back to white. Now we can still select a bunch of these. So the next thing is just like we had a uh, selected object, we need to still be able to have a selected object. So I think. Uh, what we should be able to do is we can use that on pointer enter method that we used for our other cards. That would probably be a good idea. So let's just take this away. And we're going to use this as one of our conditions. And we'll also use this as one of our conditions. But we're not going to use this part as one of our conditions. So we will Control copy, paste it right here. So we've just enabled the selected object feature for on pointer ed enter and on pointer exit. And on pointer exit, what we want to do is we want to deselect our object. So we're going to say selected location equals false. And we're going to change our color back to white. So notice how I'm still not doing any of those. Oh, we accidentally moved up. That's, that's a mistake. You don't want to move up. So let's change that back. Um, <laughs> where is our select our move up? Transform translate up 20. Oh, okay, right here. So we want to make this and location or playable is false, not location or playable. There we go. Otherwise we'll move up. We don't want to move up. We got to fix the bugs. Okay, perfect. We can now select locations and it responds and everything's good. Sorry for the long video, but uh, we're kind of adding a lot, so it's worth it. All right. So we want to be able to select a card and then select the location and play the card. So let's try and get that to happen. Right now we have our card type has chosen. We have location or playable selected location. So if we have chosen and we've selected the location, we should be able to play. So right now let's look for has chosen because that's pretty much the key here. If our deck of cards here has chosen and we're not a location, um, <laughs> I don't think we even need this anymore, but we're going to keep it just for reference to that line. Let's see. If we have chosen, and we've selected a card and we're not a location then if we have not chosen sorry if we've not chosen and we have not we are moused over a card and we're not a location then choose a card that's what it's currently saying perfect okay so that part's fine and then what we want to do is um, if we've selected a location, so where is that at? I'll pointer down, select the location. It's not select the location. So this part right here. If we've selected a location and it's a location or playable, then we turn it red. 
But if we've selected a location, it's location or playable. We also want to be able to play a card. Hmm. Let's take this line and we kind of want to put it up above. No? Maybe? Yeah, I, how about this? I'm gonna take this line and then put it down below both of those. So the reason why I did that is it's gonna work with our logic. What we wanna do is we want to flip these. So take the not way, sorry about that, my alarm just went off. We wanna flip those. So put the knot up here and then just do this little switchy thing down below. Because this is on pointer down, so you actually have to physically click for this to happen. And what we're gonna do is down below, where we've like kind of changed things up. Hmm. We can put if location or playable. Oh, we don't even have to write it again. We already have it right here. Duh. What we can do is we can now reset the image. Game object get component image. Oops. Dot sprite equals, and then this will be our our card image sprite. So for right now. I'm just going to set it to deck of cards dot deck of cards dot card images zero. But later we'll get the correct card image. All right. So hopefully this works. We'll we'll see how this goes. Hit play. So we're able to change it to a card image, and you can kind of see that. We want to be able to. Uh, change it to a specific card image though. We don't want to just change any of these to a card image and we only want it to work after we select a card. So something's still wrong because we only want this to work after we select a card. So <laughs> maybe we do need a new condition. We need if deck of cards dot deck of cards dot has chosen. I think we need that condition. Let's go back to Unity and let's try this. So we should not be able to change it to an ace yet. Perfect. And then once we select a card, then we should be able to change it to an ace. Perfect. I guess we don't want to be able to do multiple. So we'd probably need to, once we play a card, probably need to end our turn. need to end turn. Um, I'm going to split this into two videos because it's going kind of long. But what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to kind of like polish this up and finish the process. So I'll catch you guys next time. Like and subscribe and good luck.